A warm welcome to the quiet garden at Durbanville. I am Beryl and my co-facilitator is Isabel. Today's theme is the Trinity, a table set for four. Let us pray. God of unchangeable power, thank you for revealing yourself to us as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Keep us firm in this faith, we pray. Amen. Icons are made specifically in, through and for prayer to focus intentionally on God and to show how God is in the world. They are windows that open us to save the spiritual within the world around us. The Trinity, one of the most beautiful icons written by Andrei Rublev, depicts the three angels who visited Abraham at the Oak of Mamre, as found in Genesis 18, 1-8. At this point, would you please pause the voice recording so that we can watch the YouTube video clip on Rublev's Trinity, which takes about 15 minutes. Afterwards, please resume listening to the voice recording. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one and only true God. Amen. With these words, the Christian starts his prayer, making the sign of the cross to testify about his Christian identity, and to be anointed with the grace of the crucified one, entering by it into the intimate heavenly relationship with the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed are you, Abraham, for you have seen them, and you have received the one God in three persons. God has chosen to reveal himself to Abraham in his three persons. Abraham bowed and worshipped these three persons, welcomed them, and fed them. He talked to them sometimes in the singular form, and sometimes in the plural form. And he realized that he was in the presence of God, when his visitors announced to his wife Sarah, who was old and well advanced in years, that about the same time next year, she would have a son who will be called Isaac, which means the Lord laughs. These visitors, which the scripture refers to sometimes as men and sometimes as angels, are a vision of the Trinity that appeared to Abraham. This vision was of great inspiration to writers of icons. During the times of the Russian Civil War, beginning of the 15th century, St. Sergei Radonsky, founder of the Trinity Monastery, wanted people to know, through meditating on the Trinity, how to overcome the hatred that was destroying Russia. So he asked Rublev to write the Trinity icon. After years of worshiping, praying, fasting, and meditating on the Gospel of John, Rublev took the scene of the angel's visitation to Abraham as a starting point. Then he removed from the scene people, jars, and food, meaning he took it out of its time dimension and placed it in its original or eternal form. And there was the Trinity icon. The beauty of this icon resides in its fullness, both in its artistic side as well as its doctrinal. 
It was presented in a big ceremony to the Monastery of the Trinity to be laid in a place of honor in the iconostasis on the right side of the altar. And on the thousandth anniversary of the baptism of the Russian people in the year 1988, the great iconographer Andrei Rublev was beatified and a picture of him holding against his chest the Trinity icon was distributed to the people. Meditation on the icon that incarnates the mystery of the Trinity, its greatness and its oneness. In this holy icon, we see three angels gathering around a table. They are still and calm. The cup that bears the figure of the Lamb grabs their undivided attention. He is in the heart of the triune God since the beginning, for he is the slain Lamb of the world. The resemblance between the angels is striking and is intentional to highlight the oneness of the Trinity. The signs of this oneness are many. We notice that their faces are alike both in figure, features, and expressions. And we notice that both genders, male and female, are mingled in their facial features. In the beginning, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. As for their golden wings, they are touching one another as an indication of the oneness of these three angels. Each one is holding a scepter. One scepter means one authority and is pointed at the symbol that he represents. The father points his scepter at the house. The son's scepter pointed at the tree of life. While the Holy Spirit's scepter is pointed towards the ascending rocks, the place of the anointing. Another sign of the oneness is the blue color that is seen under the angel's wings and in their robes. Behind the middle angel, or the sun, we see a tree. It is the tree of life, and it takes its nourishment from the table. It replaces the oak tree that was described in the scene of the visitation of the angels to Abraham. The tree is a summary of the history of salvation, for the Bible starts with the story of a tree of life in the book of Genesis and ends with the same tree of life in the book of Revelation. The tree in the icon symbolizes also the cross that was made out of wood on which Christ was crucified. Today, he was hanged on a tree. As for the rock, it reminds us of the people who were thirsty in the desert. Moses struck the rock with his staff, and out of it came water. It also reminds us of the Apostle Peter, for he is the rock on which the church was built. The house that replaced Abraham's tent and is opposite the rock reminds us of the everlasting presence of God amongst his people in the Holy Church and in the pure virgin, the mother of the incarnated God who also represents the church. As for the table, it is symbolic of the divine feast and symbolic also of the earth in its four corners that represent the four Gospels and the Universal Word. The rectangle on the table is symbolic of the catacombs 
where the blood of the first Christian martyrs were mixed with the blood of their master and redeemer. This is why churches place a supply of them on their altars. The cup in the center of the table stands for the Lamb of God, for it is the symbol of the divine sacrifice that was given to us through Jesus Christ. The three angels are sitting around the table leaving an empty place, as if inviting each one of us to take part in this divine meal. In this icon, as in most icons, especially the Pantocrator icon, or the icon of the Omnipotent God, Christ is wearing the blue and purple color sign of his two natures, the divine and the human. As for the green color that decorates the robe of the angel on the right, it indicates that the Holy Spirit is the everlasting spring of the church that was born when he came on her in tongues of fire on the day of Pentecost. The robe of the Father seems transparent. It is hard to define their color, and as the liturgy says, he is the one that is beyond description, beyond understanding, inapproachable, and unfathomable. His right hand is barely seen, as if undefined. He gives the permission to bless the holy cup. The Son obeys, blesses the cup with two fingers, representing his two natures, the human one and the divine. As for the Holy Spirit, he points with his hand to the recipient of the blessing and is directed towards the earth. It blesses the world, holds it and protects it, as if it were the wings of a dove beholding the compassion of motherhood. What holds our attention in this icon is the spiral movement that has its starting point on the left foot of the angel on the right, and that moves towards his head, embracing with it the rock and the tree, which means that the whole world is drawn towards the Father through the Holy Spirit. Then it embraces the Son's head that is leaning towards the Father. This circular motion is seen mostly in the eyes of the angels. The usual way in icons is for the eyes to look to the observer. So faces are drawn facing him as if looking at him. In this particular case, the eyes are looking in a circular way and the faces are almost sideways. Rublev took different architectural forms as a base for his painting, and they are the rectangle, the triangle, the circle, and the cross. The rectangular table is symbolic of the earth in its four corners, and it draws the hands of the angels, becoming the center of the divine love. If we draw a virtual circle around the three angels, we notice that they fit perfectly within the circle, and its center point is the hand of the middle angel. If we join with a virtual line the center point of the lower part of the table to the head of the angel on the right and the head of the angel on the left, we notice that the angels are drawn in a perfect equilateral triangle, which represents the equivalence of the three persons of the Trinity and their oneness. As for the cross, it is the invisible access of the icon on which the whole painting is based. The horizontal line that joins the halos of the two angels intersects with the vertical line to form a virtual cross. It is in the heart of the triune love. 
and the crucified one is the Son. One more noticeable thing is that the two angels, the one on the right and the one on the left, form with their body posture the figure of a cup. And Christ is in the middle of the cup, and even inside it, showing that he fully became the sacrifice for salvation when he shed his blood for the redemption of mankind. The icon of the Trinity holds the mystery of the universe and it is the love of the triune God who entered the history of mankind through his work and his presence. Welcome back. The gaze between the three figures show the deep respect between them as they all share a common bowl. Notice the spirit's hands as it points towards the open and fourth space at the table. For whom is the Holy Spirit offering this space? At the front of the table there appears to be a little rectangular hole. Art historians believe the residue of the possible glue on the original icon indicate that there was perhaps once a mirror glued to the front of the table. It's stunning if you consider that there's room for a fourth at the table. The one in the mirror, the observer, you. When you are ready, here are some thoughts and questions for your reflection. Do you see yourself as the one more welcome to fill the empty space at the divine table? How do you feel as you explore this possibility? Who or what would you like to place at the divine table? While watching the YouTube video clip, what else captured your attention and spoke to you? Some more biblical readings about the Trinity are found in Corinthians 12 verses 4 to 6 and Ephesians 3 13 to 21. The following poem titled After Rublev's Trinity is by Carrie Purcell Carla. Each face turned towards a face at table, leaving always a space for one more, an open door to run through when someone can't quite make it home on their own. Though the wings work, humans haven't got them, and it's hard to converse from heights. So, in one hand a staff to lean on, the other hand ever reaches down to touch us, to grasp our hand firmly and draw us into the divine life. A closing prayer. Spirit of God, come dwell deep within us. With every step we take, guide us. With every prayer we make, hear us. We make this prayer in the name of God, our Creator. You who shared your Son with us, Jesus our Saviour, who died and rose for us, and the Holy Spirit, our guide, who binds us all together. Amen. Enjoy your day as you are invited to be in relationship with 
and to join in the divine dance of the triune God. <laughs>